Thank you for joining me on Synthesis Workshop. On today's Total Synthesis episode, we'll take a look at a recent synthesis by the Zvenda Group, who developed a route to Bactabolin A. Bactabolin A is a secondary metabolite, which has been shown to have anti-tumor properties as well as antibacterial activity due to its ability to target the bacterial ribosome. In their retrosynthetic analysis of this target, the authors imagined that it might be possible to disconnect using an amide coupling as well as an intramolecular alkoxy carbonylation. With these simplifications, they suggest that Bactable NA could be accessed from this bicyclic precursor, which might be viewed as the product of an intramolecular CA amination. Finally, they propose that by disconnecting with a vinylogous aldol reaction, it should be possible to simplify further into accessible building blocks. In the synthetic direction, the authors begin with this protected diol, which is accessible through a six-step sequence that starts from quinic acid. As quinic acid itself is available in an intiopure form, this synthesis falls within the realm of chiral pool synthesis, which has recently received very nice coverage in this review and ChemRev at the bottom. So, starting from this enone, they started by treating with TBS triflate and Hunig's base, which gave selective deprotonation at the gamma position. Then, treating with titanium tetrachloride and the dichloroketone, they carried out a diastereoselective Mukayama aldol addition. They found that this protecting group on the diol was critical for getting a high diastereoselectivity, which may indicate that it's interacting with the titanium during the reaction. A subsequent hydrogenation with palladium on carbon gave a highly diastereoselective addition to the bottom face of the enone to deliver this saturated ketone product. Now, the authors converted the tertiary alcohol into a carbamate, which was necessary in order to introduce the nitrogen present in the final target. Then, using CH amination chemistry developed by Dubois, the authors carried out a diastereoselective CH amination to give the desired oxazolidinone present in 1. They demonstrated that both the stereogenic triad on the western half of the molecule, as well as the carbamate bearing stereocenter, were necessary in order to achieve a highly diastereoselective CH amination by matching the stereo control elements of the substrate. A byproduct, which we'll label as 2, did form, however, by reaction on the dichloromethyl site through a mechanism that's not exactly clear. Carrying 1 on to the next step, they treated it with nozzle chloride and sodium hydride and were able to get the desired alkoxy carbonylation to occur. This is happening by first activating the oxazolidinone with nozzle chloride and then using sodium hydride to form an enolate that can react with the oxazolidinone to form a lactone. Now the nozzle group can be removed using 4-terp-butyl benzene thiol and potassium carbonate. With that, the authors revealed the amine and were ready to proceed with the amide coupling. By treating the amine with a protected amino acid coupling partner and the uranium coupling reagent, COMU, they got the amide to form in good yield. Then, simply treating with TFA removed the Bach group and deprotected the diol on the western side of the molecule to provide the trifluor acetate salt of the target, which could also be used to form the freebase. With that sequence, the Zvenda group wrapped up the synthesis of Bactable NA using a few very elegant disconnections, most prominently a diastereoselective CH emanation. Thank you for joining us today on Synthesis Workshop. If you enjoyed it, please support us by liking and subscribing, and feel free to send us any questions and comments you have. Follow us on Twitter to stay up to date, and see you all next time!